Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn with CCM and I am here today with one of my favorite songwriters, Kristen Getty. <laughs> How are you? I am doing great, Jamie. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So you are not in America right now. You're all the way on the other side of the planet from all of us in Ireland. How is that going right now? We are in blustery Northern Ireland. It was a beautiful weekend, but now it's that good old blustery fall weather here. The wind's wild today. <laughs> it's crazy, very dramatic. But we've been home nearly two weeks, and so we've got four young children. We're nearly all over the jet lag. Pretty much we are. But that first week, oh my gosh, it is difficult. <laughs> Six hour time change. <laughs> and um, how has the family been coping during all of this crazy time with COVID? I mean, you know, you're not able to do most of what you've done in the past of your conferences, although things did happen this year, correct? Yep, Sing Global, we, well, it was going to be Sing and Sing the Scriptures, and then it became Sing Global, Sing the Scriptures, when we had to put it on a digital platform, um, but it went incredibly well, and it actually enabled us to utilize a lot of other voices, because those who couldn't naturally, or think of coming to Nashville, um, right. were so available and able to join us, because it was digital, and also a lot of people just um, joining singing along with us from all over the world the global reach was fantastic and so encouraging and and so going forward we're not sure where all where all live events are going what it's going to be like in these next year or two but we think this digital element will always feature in what we're doing we're trying to do like some sort of hybrid version of it going into going into next year as we do um singing through the ages looking at um just hymns throughout um throughout time and what they have what they do for us and for our children for our churches and as a witness to the wider world um so yeah but you've mentioned about the children um and you know i bounce between goodness gracious they are so resilient they just go with it to just oh my goodness you know another little disappointment or they're frustrated or it's hard for them to understand or they're scared and um, but then even in that it raises to the surface the sorts of conversations that you want to have with your children you know and and so I have been grateful for that that they have seen that the vulnerability in life that um, there are such you know my kids have been pretty sheltered because of where we live and what we you know a lot of a lot of kids are the same that way in the west and so we haven't had to deal with some of these things before um, and yet we are all incredibly vulnerable and the, the world is a difficult place and they're um and just rising that to the surface means that then we can then talk about um, the hope that we have in the Lord, what the gospel means, and so I've been I've been grateful for that. Even as as a mum, I'm you know sad when they can't see the people they want to see, or even now that we're at home, just the limitations that we have in interacting with family and friends. It's, you know, it's hard for them right. to understand. Yeah, yeah. So you and Keith are very conscious in your writing. You know, you've brought hymns back to the forefront, which I love and I'm very grateful for. But you're very mm -hmm. conscious when you're writing music that it's for the individual and for the family and for the church family as a whole. Mm -hmm. But this new album that you just released in August, mm -hmm. Even Song, is a little yeah. bit different than what you've done before. Tell our fans about it. Yeah, so last year I turned 40. Oh, no, not last funny. year. This year, <laughs> this year I turned 40. Last year, he said to me, Kristen, on your birthday next year, is there some sort of little, you know, a project that you'd like to do? You spent the last 20 years singing and leading hymns. Is there anything else that you would like to do? And I thought, well, you know, I've always wanted to do this lullaby album. We've had a decade with these little girls. It would be lovely to do something which leans more into that experience and just that part of life. And um, but then as I reflected, I thought, you know, but I sing hymns with my kids. That's one of the things that we do. And so the album is a little different in its, in its production and in some of the song choices. There are some just out night lullabies there that we haven't done before. Mm -hmm. But there are a number of hymns as well that we have enjoyed doing with our kids and would be, would, thought would be appropriate for an album. It's called Hymns and Lullabies at the Close of Day. And the word even song is an old fashioned word but um it's it describes a very a, a traditional service that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years and um, in the more liturgical church settings where um it's a short service at the end of the day 
that has liturgy in it, prayers and songs and Bible readings. And it's to help redirect the heart and mind towards the Lord at the end of the day and to help sanctify the night, Mm -hmm. to reach for his promises and his truth as the steadying thing as the night falls and as we begin to process what's going on in our mind because it's quieter we feel a little more vulnerable and and so we wanted to do an album that sort of would lean into that for our kids for those who have kids but Mm -hmm. you know for the individual you know i think all of us especially these last few months most people i know have struggled to sleep some night or other and and so that we just hope this this album would be helpful for that yeah, I can't wait to listen to it. Now you have some really, really fun duets on here. I mean, you've got Vince Gill. Yeah, there we go. And Sorry, you lost me. No, no, that's okay. That's yeah. okay. That's life, right? That's what. Yeah, I'm <laughs> that here at CCM. So you have Vince okay. Gill here, and our dear friend Ellie Holcomb. Who else is on this album with you? Oh yeah, so you, you said yeah. So Vince and Ellie and Sierra Hull okay. are all on the softly and tenderly track which was one of the first hymns that we taught our kids and our little sort of hymn a month thing that we do with them and they just always love that one and it's a great one in the evening time and with family and we had met you know Vince on and off several times through the years whenever we'd perform at the Opry or something like that you know our pass across and um, so we had you know we called him up and we said listen is there any way you'd like to sing in this and he was very gracious and did and sang a verse to you in, in the chorus and then and the other um the back of our mind is also trying to recreate a moment that has happened a couple different times where a trio of girls have recorded that song mm-hmm. i think dolly parton maybe did once before Reba McIntyre recently, but I can't remember all the people they sang with. Anyway, we saw it'd be lovely. It's such a beautiful song for harmonies. And so we asked Ellie and Sierra to come in and do the harmonies. So that's the sort of what you hear there. And then um, my best friend, Deborah, who has played fiddle with us for the last, you know, 15 years, she plays on it and a couple of members of our band. And um, then Heather Headley, she joined us for His Eyes on the Sparrow. Heather is a Tony Award winning Broadway singer was Aida on Broadway, was Nala and the Lion King, has done many things. But a couple of years ago, she a few years ago, she recorded Par of the Cross, one of Keith's songs. And we got to know her around that time. And then she joined us at our Christmas show in Carnegie a couple of years ago and she did a holy night and just brought the house down. She was incredible. Yeah. And she had a little baby just the end of last no, the beginning of this year. And so we thought it would be a lovely thing, given the fact that, you know, we had Talia this last couple of years as a lullaby album. She just became a mum and that it would be lovely to do a duet in his eyes and the sparrow. So um, we did that. Um, And Sandra McCracken, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of our local friends in Nashville, fellow Nashvilleian, who's a great singer and songwriter. I love the tone of her voice. And, you know, she's done a lot of songs for kids and also her own music and worship music and hymns and so we got together one afternoon, late spring, and we um, tried to write a song, and we did Son of My Soul, and we recorded that together, sort of hymn of illumination for families. And then we also had a boys' choir, so um, the Trinity Boys' Choir over in Cambridge, and I've got four girls, not a boy in sight, and so um, uh, we thought it would be nice to have a boys' choir sing along, so the last couple of songs, and that sort of then felt a little more like the traditional even song idea where you would would have choir singing um, and their their little sweet voices just beautiful in the last couple of songs I think that's everybody <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was really great and what was extraordinary was you had a great producer Ben Shive who's fantastic mm-hmm. yeah. at pulling all that together this was all during lockdown so mm-hmm. it took it was quite the organizational thing to try and get everybody doing their thing at their, you know, find, place them to record it. if they didn't have their own studio, you know, how did they record it at home? You know, all these, you know, different, different musicians and things had to, so it was real interesting. I had a whisper room and um, Crossway provided it for me and I'm recording an audio Bible at the minute of the ESV. Right. And I, 
that it'd be possible for me to use that same little recording space. This is a soundproof room. You would love one. It's amazing. Five by seven or five by eight, whatever, it doesn't matter. Soundproof room that they just built in the garage. And I just ran off there and the kids were asleep or somebody was napping or it was just easy to go lock the door, a little quiet space. And I recorded all the vocals there. So actually I loved recording during COVID-19 because I would record a song 19 times and then decide I didn't like 15 of them and just delete them and nobody ever had to hear them. <laughs> it's just <Yeah>. me. <laughs> And then could send the ones that I thought were okay to the producer, you know. But, so yeah. it, was, it was an interesting experience. Oh, that's I keep hearing that over and over again. The ones mm. who are making music now who have said, it's been a completely new learning system, but it's been fun. And I yeah. would do it again in a heartbeat. So I'm glad yeah. you're having that same experience with it. Yeah. yeah. So you're also nominated, I think, for four gobs this year. Well, Getty Music is nominated for Forgive. So um, then what we do, we have uh, we have other writers and publish and have a label that, so two of them, one of them is with Ellie Holcomb. Right. This is for Elizabeth, a song we wrote for Christmas together yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, and that's the Bluegrass nomination, correct? Bluegrass, yeah. So it's first time a nomination in that category. So that's really cool. And then um, what was the other one? The chil- no, the children's album. The yes. children's album. Mm-hmm. So that was the chil- the carol hymns, the carol family carol sing. So that was the carols, children singing carols. So that was last year, and then Matt Boswell and Matt Papa they released an album last year um, under the Getty Music label called His Mercy Is More. And then His Mercy Is More has been such. I mean, it's a fantastic song. Our, it's one of our well, if not our kids' favorite song to sing, and they have they have absolutely loved that. And um, so the the boys are nominated for I think inspirational album. Is that right album? in yes. front of you? <laughs> inspirational, <laughs> album. An inspirational album and inspirational recorded song of the year. That's a big deal. That's a, you know, that's always, um, yeah. What does it feel like to be nominated by your peers for these type of awards? Oh, it's such an honor. And it's so, it's, yeah, it is so lovely. You know, we are, we moved across to Nashville, hmm, what was it, 11 years ago? And the nature of the work we've done in the hymns, um, you know, we've often been a little bit outside of the industry, just the way the, we're not most how Christian music is most heard and passed around in the States is through Christian radio. Mm-hmm. And while we have done some of that, the long hymns and the format in which we did wasn't always radio friendly. And also it just, we had to work out where you, you know, trying to manage all the time and everything that you do as an independent, you know, it's tricky trying to manage everything to do it all. And so um, we did, we did a lot of, you know, conferences, churches, partnerships with organizations. That's a lot of, you know, um, but it has been so lovely just you know, over the years, getting to know um, people at um, GMA and getting to know um, other artists who uh, have, have had a more formal route in terms of the industry and to be able to see, independent labels and voices part of the whole gamut of Christian music in such a way is, is a really great thing you know music is and the production of music has changed just so much in the, in, in the last decade um, and you know it's it's just it's just great that there's there's um, increasing spaces for lots of different types of music and uh, coming from different places yeah so I, I'm a huge fan and I will, I hope that you, you sweep all your categories. So. <laughs> well, we're not be here to go. Are, are they having a live? Um, how okay. are they doing? It, it won't be live. It will be um, airing on um, October 30th on TVN. So everybody make sure you tune in and watch, but it yeah. is going to be all digitally recorded. So they're um, doing performances, but there's not an audience. So it's going to be a really interesting and neat um, new concept that they're doing. And they're not focusing so much on the awards this year as the stories of the songs and stories of fans and, and all of that. Yeah. It's, it's going to be really, really neat. And um, that, that will be again, October 30th on TVN. So, but I have a couple of fun questions I want to ask you. Okay. So as a songwriter, what is your favorite lyric that you've ever written or song? And as a songwriter, I think, there's a song I wrote several years ago called My Worth Is Not On What I Own mm-hmm. and it was on the the North Coast was it was on the North Coast Sessions I don't even remember what album you'd think I should have a sheet of information it's in front okay. of me it's okay ah, 
but we were, you know, whatever. Anyway, it's my song, My Worth is Not in What I Own, and we recorded it, um, we recorded it last year at the same conference, so there's a live version of it out with, um, but we recorded it on the album with Fernando Ortega, who is one of my favorite I mean, vocalists of, I just love listening to him sing. It's just, anyway. Um, I wrote it with the song with Graham Kendrick, and I, I just find, it was the song that I was most, so fired up to write and as a as a mum with girls and everybody struggles with identity issues and where their worth is and how they met it's a constantly something that's constantly needing grace and observation because we can so easily begin to think that our our worth is and how good we are at things who we know what we have where we're going what we did and and to be able to embrace the relief of our worth being in, in Christ and being fixed in Christ um, as things begin to be taken away a little bit as you get older, you know, all these different things and knowing that our, our worth is not only found in Christ, but it is fixed because of um, what Christ has done for us on the cross. And, and so the song sort of captures that as summer flowers we fade and die and um, one of those little lines fame youth and uh, fame and youth they hurry by but um, god has called us you know to, to the cross and to and to him and um, for our eternal worth and and the last verse is which was inspired by an older hymn two wonders now that i confess my worth and my unworthiness my value fixed my ransom paid at the cross and just those issues are so important, but so important for the, you know, raising girls. Yeah, and I just, I'm hopeful that that song will be important for them, you know, a way of, you know, <clears throat> reminding them of that, you know, because this is what the power of, of songs to, to carry things that we should never forget, to go to deep places that other things don't, other things don't go. You know, when we sing something, we remember it. When we sing it over and over, we remember it even more. And when we sing some of the, uh, things that are more of a of a hymn and, and timeless style like you know great as i faithfulness you know we sing those all of our life and they, they mark the different seasons that's such the, the power of it i'm not saying my worth will be anywhere near <laughs> where great as i faithfulness is but just 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 to you know to talk about just how important it is the words that we sing and that we are singing them um, and that that particular one I was ha happy with the things that I got to say that I'd really wanted to say was able to you know massage them into the lines and get them to say that and um, it has also happens you know melodically I find in terms of singing um it was a good fit for me it felt like a good place you know for you know all of our voices have you know different strengths and where they most happily sit i think when you're leading worship with a whole bunch of people there is a degree of compromise when it comes to your singing because you're not just singing it in the key and the style the way that pleases you if the goal is to get people singing then you're trying to facilitate that and so i've often sung a little bit out of my depth or in a key that wasn't my favorite or I've kept it very plain, you know, just all these different little, little things, you know, um, but just, so yeah, <laughs> I'm now waffling with you about singing. <laughs> That's important here. <laughs> so on the other side of that question, what's a lyric or a song that you wish you had have written that someone else did? <clears throat> Well, one of my favorite hymns is Before the Throne of God Above. Um, and it was an old lyric that Vicki Cook then wrote a, a beautiful melody to. And it's, I just love that verse. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there. He made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me that is just beautiful writing and not not just you know the leading thoughts or the truth that it carries are obviously the most glorious but the use of language to convey them is just genius and um, just all the little poetic um, devices that are used to explain those ideas sinless if you died my sinful soul is counted free I mean, that's just amazing every time i sing that i go oh my goodness how did they write that <laughs> it's amazing. I'm impressed that you can remember it like that and not have to sing it in your head. <laughs> That's just because I'm particularly, I've sung a lot and I love it so much. I want it to be at my funeral. <laughs> oh. <laughs> as, as we wrap up our interview, is there a message of hope that you would like to leave with our viewer or viewers? 
Yeah, I, I think um, knowing that the hope that we have in Christ is steadfast. It is always true, no matter what changes, it is always there and to hold fast to it. And I think part of that holding fast means that we just continue in the same things that we always do. And that is something that's just struck me so much in the last few months that even though so many things have changed in terms of our interactions socially, the worries that we carry, how the world is, just everything. It just, you know, it was felt so many things were capsized. It was just crazy. And yet the call on the, the, for the Christian, for the believer of just the basic things, those main things always being the same, you know, of prayer, of the word, um, and, just the, the simplicity of that, no matter what is going on, has just really struck me and been a challenge because it's hard to maintain. And the longer, you know, to, maintain, to keep on going on on, the, on those normal little things that many people may have been doing since they were little, mm-hmm. they are still important. And um, we still need to keep leaning in, still need to keep being fed, still need to reach for Christian community. Um, those plain things are always the main things, no matter what. Kristen, thank you so much for taking time out of your day or evening, I guess, um, to talk to us here at CCM. We greatly appreciate it. And everyone, please make sure you go and listen to the new album, The Even Song. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for the chat. You're welcome. And...